Firecaster mini apps or compose direction as they're called today. How can we actually quick start? How can we build them? How do we actually go and build one? Well, first of all, on the tutorial page on dtech.vision on the webpage, the link in the description as well, you can easily see this is what we're building, right? We want to build this little mini app thing. This is the developer preview on web. This is also just how it's going to look on mobile because we have to make it responsive. That's our job as the developer. First, quick start. There is a Git template, like a GitHub template that you can use. We'll just use it. We're going to cd into the directory, like go in there, install the dependency right away, just from clicking copy, opening our terminal, pasting it in, and then we'll just wait for it to clone. Once it is cloned, we're already in there. We already have the dependencies installed. We can just open VS Code with that folder, and we're here, right? So now we just follow along the tutorial, and then we'll be good. So the actual GitHub itself also has, as I just said, all their codes. You can just look in there for what you need. It also has a literal description on how you can do your testing and what you need to change as it's in here, right? So you can just also go to the GitHub, do it easily. Don't need this video if you already know. Otherwise, I'll walk you through now. So let's just make this a little smaller. First of all, you need to understand that we're going to be now shipping a custom composer action right now already if we were to de deploy just how this is today and just straight out of the repo we would already see this little hello main test right so but there's no local debugger that i'm aware of you could simply go npm run dev you get localhost 3000 localhost 3000 and right away Here's your web page, right? And this is also the same thing that is going to be seen in the client because we're just building web page, right? You have to understand, this is just a web page. Like, there's just no, no complex anything. It's a web page. The only thing that is Firecaster specific is that in our source directory, we will have an API page that I just called compose, but you can do whatever you want with it. That is just going to return this URL. And you may not want it to be localhost. You may want this to be your extra domain, like vision or something else um, you want to name it you want to choose an icon which the docs tell you what a valid icon is like an arrow checkbox anything and you want to give it a description and here you can also promote your stuff or just put the same web page in again and this is what is going to show in webcast when they show you a review like this the title the description all that they get that from this post metadata route and from the get uh, from the post story, from the post, you'll get a frame message and you'll just return the page where they go to. On a GET request, you're getting them the information. So how it works, if if we look at it a little more in detail, so we go to Composer Actions, Mini Apps, blah, blah, blah. It's also all in the docs. There's something on what you can actually do with them. But the general gist is just, okay, here is our Firecaster client, Webcast, for example. And that is going to say, hey, I want to use this compose direction, this mini app. Okay, here is our response. And then they're going to say, yay, this is cool. This description, whatever, right? And they're going to say, hey, please give us this web page that you're talking about. Like the user actually wants to do this. And then it's going to be shown, right? Because you're returning that. And this is the two parts of the code that do it for you. Like all you would have to do to turn an existing web page into a mini app is just that. That's all. Add a route that returns this, and this is JSON, by the way, right? So like you can use any language, any framework, as long as you return this little piece of JSON, and you're good to go. If you want to see how that looks like, documentation has samples for the down below. You can also copy it there or from the GitHub, right? So we already know how to set that up, and we'll change that to the domain later. We're not going to host it. We'll just walk through the building. And now that we have that, and we also know that we have an image that is square for the icon and all of it, we can actually go and look at how Warpcast is going to know what we're actually composing. So the way that it works is that while I'm on Warpcast, and we can just quickly do this, if I actually post a cast and I go here and I'm searching for an action, say like snake, then what I can do is 
I can actually share this, right? So if I click share, then my web page that I've built here is going to tell Warpcast to pre-fill all of this text and there's my framing. So I could do free marketing or get the user to post whatever, or if I'm actually a helpful composer action for the user typing something, I could build like a grammar correction a translation. So I'm typing in German, but then I hit the translate to English and it's just going to autofill that. Um, so that would work just from wrapping it and then you can have people post, right? So to get that, we have to pass the message onto the actual webcast page, which is by doing this window.parent, post the message, get the message up to webcast so they know what you're doing. It's going to be type of create cast. Why is there a type? Well, because they want to be flexible, right? In the future, this can change. And then they don't have to change anything besides saying, hey, there's a new type that you can return here. And then we have obviously the text and the embeds uh, that we want to do. Like the text is the actual text and the embeds could be images, whatever, right? So just put a, new, a URL there. And then this is, this is how you return. And this is not in the actual compose. This is in the index. So in our, our source pages in our index, our main page, our main just web app has that. Well, what you could also do is you could check if you're embedded in an iframe in webcast and then you can change your button, right? Whereas you may want to just use cast intense or something else like Twitter or just send the user somewhere else or do something else if they click that button. You can check if they are within webcast and then you could do that. I'm not going to go into all of it. So as we've now seen, we have a button. We can create a button for the user to exit it and pre-fill their text. So right now in this template, this is our whole thing that we have here as well. If we change it from DTAG is the best to hello world, then this text will not be DTAG is the best. It will actually be hello world, right? So this little thing, if we now press that on Warpcast, we would now get the text filled with hello world because that's what we do in our post message. And then from there, if we want to actually get all of this like chocolate selection and ice cream selection and all of it, we can just use regular good old whatever programming you want to do for the web page. And in this case, this is an XJS sample. So we could just add all of that code in, which I actually put all of this in there here. So you can just go copy that over. And you should technically not have it because I didn't include all of it, right? Yeah, I'm a sucker. So if we just Look at it again. Previous code remains unchanged. Ha <laughs> ha I'm a sucker. I'm like the, the AI bots that don't give you anything. Okay, our home. Function home. And we go down if, even before the return. Okay, so we just add that to our home. We need the use state import. Yes, okay, nice. And then we actually have to get our button. Is this main? Do we have the main? Yes, we do. Do, do, do. So the only thing we're adding now is the actual form and selector to do all of this. So we, what do we want? Do we want still want the logo? Okay, let's just replace that text right here. Let's just replace that text right here. Okay, cool. So now what we have done is this already changes and we actually have our text here. This white we actually want to have a text also be in black so we can just you should just be able to go is there a text color text black i'd say okay and now it's all black right something i should actually change on the web page but as you can see we just use tailwind we just do webinar web programming front end stuff good old shit. and now you can just select and since we've selected more than three, it doesn't work. And now we can select other ones. And if we hit share, then, well, we don't see anything. Why? Because we're on the web page. We're not actually on webcast. So if we now change this on click, and now we're saying console.log um, hello world, then we can just quickly open that console. And we're now seeing hello world, right? Like this is good old web programming. This is not different than anything you have seen before or already know. So now the only thing you need to do, deploy this somewhere, go into your compose, change that URL to where to deploy it, 
or use something like on virtual process.env.virtual URL or uh, localhost, right? Slash slash localhost 30,000. And that way, is because our environment variable isn't set, we would actually get the localhost back for our testing. And if we deploy to virtual, we would actually get the virtual thing. And then we can change this to not, it's not create a poll frame, it is actually share your favorite favorite ice cream right uh, this is what we do and this is our ice cream poll and this is all you would do and then we can also look at the different kinds of icons that we have okay so this is maybe um, what which one do we pick let's just pick an a heart because we want to actually get our favorite ice cream and where were we at VS Code. So we can now get that in here and now it's a heart, right? And and that's all of it of the ways that we can change this and adopt this and we're already done, right? Like right now here it's still the hello world text. So in our index we can just go back, walk through the tutorial more and just see, okay, we actually want to change our cast text and we actually want to build this cast text and we can also use a handle share function. So let's just do that and we want to potentially disable it and like we can do all of this fancy stuff i would urge you to just read through that tutorial to deploy there's also a, a tutorial to go into the debugger and we could also build snake uh, which which i haven't written for up fully but you can just go program your snake game in here as we did with the form and you're done right that's all and that's all i've actually done so this is how you build a composer action. This is how you actually get to this part. The deployment is, is highly up to you, how you want to deploy this. And then what you do in the actual frame debugger, which this is one that I actually should show you, is you will go my HTTPS, my URL.com slash, and then you have the compose endpoint, right? So this is your API endpoint, which is the compose. This is where you want, you want it to hit. Where you want it to go and there you handle the post and you get handle the get for the metadata and that's all then you have to put some text in here because then otherwise the, the, it's not going to send any text and then you can just get that text right how would you get that text that is sent to you here in that data endpoint we're already logging it so you'll see it while you're testing and while you have it deployed but here in the, on that data endpoint because you're actually just getting a frame message you can go to the frames specification and in the frame specification we can just search for message and then it's going to have the message and in that frame message which is actually uh, documented further below i think yes this is the the general type that you that you can expect and that you're going to get you have this uncrusted data and all of it so that is basically what you're getting and, and what you can expect. So you also get the FID, you get the timestamp, you could lo even lock a user in, right? right? Like right here, if you can verify the trusted messages, like the message bytes as a signature, and it matches with that FID, then you know, already know, okay, this is this user, I can return um, a session cookie as well, and already know that the user is locked in and do some more magic. If you actually want to do that magic, I would actually urge you to go on the DTEC webpage again, and under frames, there is an authentication sign in uh, authentication tutorial and there we already do that it's also a video version on this youtube channel and then we can already know how to handle the login how to verify all of this and actually go and do it right and then we're, we're building the sign in with farcaster frame message uh, and all of it right there and we're discussing security of it whatever and this is in the response so for more details look there but this is just a general rather quick start on how you can get your composer action on i know this is not a full code along because you actually have to do the coding yourself because otherwise you sadly won't learn and on this build more cool shit